Hey you, and welcome. My name is Mike, and in this whole video, we're going to look at a story. Uh, it revolves around either luck or stupidity, depending on how you look at it. It all kicked off when a simple SD card, right? Much like this one, but you know, not this one. Was found simply chilling on the sidewalk. Someone spied it. Ah, oh, hey, free SD card. She was mad chuffed about it. This would then lead to a very, uh, bizarre, I would say, discovery. This is a story that's still ongoing, so I'm sure you will have a lot of questions, just like I do, but it is a hell of a story. So let's give it a go. Chilio, Alaska, I've been told, is the setting for our story today, the city of Anchorage. What do we, having covered stories from there before, know about Anchorage? You got bears? Uh-oh. Mooses? Even bigger, uh-oh. And serial killers. We never go to Alaska with good intentions, is my point. Though then again, I mean, as a true crime channel, I never go anywhere with good intentions. Let's move on. So Anchorage 2019, specifically the 30th of September. That day was chilly enough, 39 degrees Fahrenheit, 3 degrees normal. The colours were that of autumn, and frost was in the air big time. At exactly 4.06pm that day, a 911 call was made to the Anchorage police. A woman had found something. And so the police rocked up to this woman's house. She had something to give them. It was, as I said at the top, uh, an SD card, right? Probably just like, probably just like this one. But it had a label on it. Written on it was Homicide at Midtown Marriott. Sounds like a shitty book title, or maybe a like forgettable episode of Law and Order. But what was on the SD card was anything but forgettable, let me tell you. This woman was minding her own beeswax, walking along, when she saw it on the street at the corner of Fairbanks Street and 13th Avenue, in Fairview, near the Cars store. Fairview, a working class neighborhood, is right by downtown Anchorage. Cars would probably be, you know, one of the main supermarkets there, so busy traffic coming to and from. This lady handed over the SD card, and on it was 39 images 12 videos, all from the same incident. And they showed just some horrific violence and sexual assault against a woman in what looked like a hotel room. The videos were recorded by a man. Now, he's never seen in any of the videos. He was holding the camera and the woman was being strangled. In one of the videos, she's fighting back. She's scratching at him, trying to get him to stop. And in another, the man said his hand was getting tired, so he started stomping on her neck, saying she needed to die, and he was he was laughing. Uh, there's obviously a lot more. It's very, very disturbing. Then there's images of her uh, deceased. She's in a rolling, uh, like, hotel cart near a black pickup truck, like, covered with a sheet. How did he get her body out of the hotel without anybody seeing? It's bizarre. The dates on the videos and images were from the 4th of September, 2019, so less than a month before the card was found. So yeah, when that woman saw the card and picked it up, I don't know what she was expecting to be on it. Probably thought, probably joked about it being like a snuff film. And then it was. Anchorage is a small city for Alaska's largest. Close to 300,000 people living there, so finding something like this, pretty disconcerting. Now, they didn't see the perp's face, but they did hear his voice. It had, quote, some sort of English-sounding accent when he spoke. Hmm. Well, it would have sounded quite a bit like this. There through those trees, you'll see the doctor's house. He's a, like a heart surgeon or brain surgeon or something. 
these are other neighbors and there's the tree in front of the house and there's the other neighbors um, there's like a, a man and two women living there I don't know what going on but it sounds interesting Ooh, okay uh, that there is Vicky's house it's fripping freezing out here I'm walking here in this frozen shit and there's a car chick magnet number two finally I can use my South African accent yes. So who was this guy who was this woman? Ah, it sounded good in my head. Well, two days after the SD card was handed in and the investigation you know, began, uh, they discovered who the woman was once again through pure, pure stumbling upon it. On the 2nd of October, at a quarter past nine in the AM, police were once again called, this time to milepost 108 of the Seaward Highway about a 20 minute drive south from where the card was discovered. There, human remains were found in the bushes just off the highway. So, from the date of the video, September 4th, to the discovery, October 2nd, well, she'd likely been there for a while. The police then, from the videos, they recognized the location. Actually, I think it was, I think it was the woman who first found the SD card. She told the police uh, where those videos were filmed as she had it thousand yards there. She, or someone, recognised the carpet pattern. It was a hotel in Anchorage, the Town Place Suites by Marriott Midtown. The rooms would look a little something like this. And the police recognised the voice of the guy in the video. South Africa falls pretty far down on the list of immigrants to Alaska. I can't keep it up. The police knew this guy. They had dealt with a South African man. Um, not too long before as part of a separate, completely separate investigation. Now, they've never said what that investigation was, but I think I might have an idea. Anyway, this guy's name was Brian Smith. They went to the hotel, the Town Place Suites, and checked the guest list. Brian Smith happened to have stayed there from the 2nd of September to the 4th. They also obtained a warrant for his cell phone, and it pinged at the location where the body was found. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. On Monday, the grand jury returned indictments for a first named victim. Those charges included murder, sexual assault, tampering with physical evidence. At that point, we asked the grand jury to make a special finding regarding substantial torture. That special finding that the grand jury made, if Mr. Smith is convicted, um, and that finding is upheld by the sentencing judge, could subject him to a mandatory minimum 99 year sentence. Today. The name of the victim was released on the 10th of October as 30-year-old Kathleen Jo Henry. Not really much is known about Kathleen. She was active on social media though, right up until five days before, five days before uh, those videos were taken in the hotel. She was from a place called Eek, a place mostly made up of native Alaskans. Less than 500 people lived there. It's well in the boonies, like, I don't even think you can drive there from Alaska. It's 400 miles away, over a lot of mountains. So, she was from there, but now lived in Anchorage. Divorced, and she described herself as a tough Alaska chick since 1997 to present. She got her GED in 2012, when she was 23, while she was incarcerated. She actually had a bit of a record since 2007. Multiple counts of assault, disorderly conduct, drunk driving, resisting arrest, theft. Most recently, on the 12th of January 2019, she had assaulted someone in the fourth degree. Which is when someone physically assaults and inflicts demonstrable bodily harm, or intentionally throws or transfers bodily fluids upon a specific class of people. So that could really be anything. But it seemed like she was getting her act together. She was excited about the future, and she was loved. How she came into contact knew uh, Brian Smith remains unknown. So while all this was being discovered, the investigation, you know, was ramping up and they started connecting the dots, Brian Smith was actually out of Alaska. He was vacationing in Virginia with his wife. 
In fact, a weird nugget was that the SD card was found the day he left Alaska. On the 8th of October, he flew back into Ted Stevens International Airport. He was due to start a new job at the Residence Inn, another hotel operated by the Marriott. Brian actually worked at a Marriott hotel, just not the crime scene one, a different one near University Lake. He was arrested at the airport and charged with murder. Are your name and date of birth correct on there? 48 year old Brian Stephen Smith. Uh, I've about $2,000. An immigrant from South Africa is charged with her murder. Police met Smith at the airport as he returned to Anchorage from a trip. They say Smith is on that side of the courtroom glass today because a woman found an SD card with evidence on it and turned it in to APD. Had the citizen not called us after she found the video card, we would not have been able to solve this crime as quickly as we did. So let's learn about Brian. This is the the beaver dam. It it was made by ancient beavers a thousand years ago. Uh, you can still see the burial grounds over there. Um, I'm speaking shit. You know that. <laughs> anyway, it's an actual beaver there. There's, I don't know if this GoPro can pick it up, but there's a little beaver house over there. Very pretty out here. It actually looks prehistoric. Prehistoric with a capital P. Brian Smith was 48 years old, from South Africa, born in Queenstown, Eastern Cape. Other than his very creepy, uh, fucking creepy Facebook pictures, not a whole lot is known about him. But he looks like what he is. He attended Queen's College High School and operated a guest house in South Africa and was dreaming of owning his own hotel. Probably a hotel like the one H.H. H. Holmes had. It appears he met his future wife, Stephanie, about two decades older than himself, via online gaming. They fell in love later married in 2014 after knowing each other only seven months and that same year 2014 he moved to alaska you see how the mother has disappeared she took two steps and she's actually gone now no she's right there yeah but, but you can hardly oh, see her you know this is the worst wild animal yeah <laughs> stephanie her passion was music but she paid the bills as an administrative officer at the u.s immigration and naturalization service so listen lads, I guess that kind of helps if you want to move to America. Married a person signing the forms. She would later say she was totally unaware of his extracurricular activities. Uh, once again, you know, like we see in a lot of these cases, you know, of killers, the oblivious spouse. When I think about that, I think, um, how could I have missed, how can you miss something like that? You know, I've never seen anything that dark in him. He had no criminal record in Alaska, at least. Not sure about South Africa, where he had served in the military there. Upon moving to America, he worked at Alaska Tire Service, Dell Engineers, the Marriott at University Lake, and was going to start a new job. In 2019, he became a U.S. citizen. He became one on the 21st of September 2019. And he was living with his wife and their cat, in a quiet neighborhood, Geneva Woods. So he was, he was always a pretty quiet guy, a loving husband, uh, according to Stephanie. But here's two things about him. He had a YouTube channel where he would film quite a bit, unfortunately for him. He would film his travels around the world, so let's take a quick look at some of his videos. And he also had a Quora account, you know, where he could ask and answer questions. And he used that more than anything. And his score kind of revealed him to be kind of a giant racist. I mean, I already hate him enough for being a killer and filming him gruesomely murdering someone. He just kept adding his sack of shitness upon himself. His questions on Korra mainly resolve around, uh, well, it's not surprising he's a killer. He basically just goes on about race relations and South Africa and Africa in general. 
But I did find out he's a big fan of GTA Vice City. He also relatively frequently uploaded videos to his YouTube channel about his life in Alaska and his travels. You can get closer because you can get away. He can't get down there that fast. You know what? The mommy can come down and kick my ass. Hello, kitty. Oh, you like that lichen, do you? Hey, that's Stephanie's roses. His wife would say, leading to the murder, she didn't notice anything wrong. She never did, never suspected a thing. Police spent 12 hours searching the couple's home. Among the items they collected, electronics and handfuls of SD cards. So I guess that's what what they are. Mm -hmm. And I don't use them, but I don't have cameras. And, and uh, they didn't take this. So they've been taking yeah. weapons, knives, guns, yeah, my computer and his laptop. All of it bewildering for Bisland, whose husband, a standout hotel employee and new citizen, seemed to have so much going for him. In early September, though, uh, she would say the couple, herself and Brian, they, they wanted to take a few days apart, whatever that means. So he checked into the Marriott at Midtown, used his employee discount, and then what happened there happened there. Brian's wife Stephanie would say he had a lot of SD cards in the house and he had a lot of camera equipment. On the 7th of September, just a couple of days after the murder, Brian placed an ad on Facebook selling a computer and a drone. Then, not long after, still in September 2019, he made a report to the police. Now this is what I find interesting because this could be how the police recognised uh, his voice on the video, you know, it would have been relatively fresh in their minds as, you know, one of the few South Africans, I'm sure, living in Anchorage. He had no criminal record in Alaska, so it could have been the only way they would have met him. So he made this report to the police in September 2019 after his hotel escapades. And he said that while he was at work, his vehicle was vandalized, the passenger side window smashed in, and his wallet, documents, a briefcase with phones, and some electronics, including a GoPro, were stolen. So he reported this to the police. So maybe uh, it's possible, right, that the SD card that had the homicide at Midtown Marriott on it, that SD card was stolen by the thief from his car. Maybe the thief stole that SD card when they were taking shit from his car, went home, watched it, saw what it was, and they were the one who labeled it. And then they just dropped it hoping it would be found. I don't know, this is a theory. If they wanted somebody to find a murder video, why not just anonymously give it to the police or leave it outside the police station? But Brian's wife Stephanie would say she never saw any labels on any of his SD cards. So she did say it was unusual that that one had a label. Though if you... Though if a snuff film uh, was stolen and it was labeled by himself, would he have reported that to the police? Hey! Somebody stole my horrific video. Smith letting his lawyer do the talking. Do all these will waive reading of the charges and advisement of rights and enter a not guilty plea after jury trial. What could Smith have thought looking out into the courtroom and seeing this? A silent but powerful show of force that missing and murdered indigenous women will not be forgotten. And then after his arrest, Brian admitted to 
another murder. Veronica Abuchuk. He told the police that sometime between 2017 and 2018, he shot a woman and disposed of her body. The police showed him a picture of missing Veronica and he said, yep, that's her. On the fifth floor of an Anchorage courthouse, so much love on a day of so much hurt. They've spent time um, searching for VRA, and um, now that they have some answers, they're still left with many uh, questions unanswered. VRA is Veronica Abouchek, identified by police as a second known victim of Brian Smith, seen here in a picture taken a few years ago by her sister. Veronica, 53, went missing in July 2018, but it wasn't reported until February 2019. Veronica was last described as homeless, and her remains had been found before he told them where, but it remained an unsolved case until Brian admitted it. Yet another unsolved case where Indigenous women are involved. The last face they saw is believed to be 48-year-old Brian Stephen Smiths, an immigrant from South Africa who became a U.S. citizen just last month. Enter police of not guilty. According to court documents, he's confessed to both of the killings. In a news conference today, Anchorage's deputy district attorney announced a grand jury has indicted Smith on a total of 13 felony charges for both killings. Charges of murder, sexual assault, evidence tampering, along with a misdemeanor charge of misconduct involving a corpse. So when the police arrested Brian in October 2019, uh, he admitted to being the guy in the video. He admitted to, you know, sneaking her body out of the hotel and into his truck. How did he do that? He admitted to dumping her body. He admitted to another murder, the murder of uh, Veronica. And he pled not guilty. Why the shit he would label a goddamn SD card with what was on it a murder is the stupidest shit I can think of. Besides the fact that he actually recorded it, which he did probably just to get his rocks off. The police and his wife said there was a shitload more of those SD cards. I think the possibility of him being a serial killer uh, quite real. The police in Alaska have been in contact with said African authorities to see if there's anything there. But who knows what more we'll find. This case was actually supposed to go to trial ages ago, but then uh, the pandemic hit, so there's still no word on when it will actually go ahead. But to date, that's it. There you have it. What a gobshite. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you taking the time to be here with me. Um, here, go on. I'll see you as always real soon in the next little video. Until then, please look after yourselves. I love you, my kid.